The welcome letter. The first of the seventh month of 1436, I had something to say about the welcome letter. Of the Green Two Discourses, Lesson One. Oh, I'll stop with the welcome letter. Um, and I will not remember my dreams with the spiritual night. Uh, with the spiritual master tonight. Uh, I will not remember my dreams with the spiritual master tonight, spiritual exercise. Oh, that's not quite the one they had, but page nine has a picture of Harold Klemp from about 25 years ago. Now, remember it's 1443 when this is being released. So it's seven years later than that. To help people remember what he looks like. That makes it easier for people to see an accurate view of him in dreams and visions if they choose to do such things. Welcome letter. Harold Klemp opens, suggesting reading Ekankar discourses is the same thing as opening yourself to God's love and feeding on it. As much as the one called Living Ekmaster speaks of divine love, he says relatively little about it in both terms of a noun and verb. Dreams are like voyages, but that doesn't mean they are necessarily conveying a past life or some other actual history. History has effects on us through others, but dreams are not a reliable way of learning about history. Remembering dreams can't heal all wounds. I mean, it may be a necessary process, but it, you know, Alcoran Surah 2880 tells us that it is who Prophet Ibrahim, Abraham, worshipped that cures from all that ails us. Which one do you think is the correct viewpoint? And of course, when we talk about Abrahamic religion, let's not pretend that this is just whether or not Abraham is claimed. Um, this welcome section has no workbook activities, such as the same for the what's next letter. Harold Clinton does close with a postscript that has an implied threat to your mental well-being. If you read further than you're prescribed one lesson a month, Ekankar is sort of like a placebo pill that makes some people feel loved with no more distinct actions or concepts and like they are enlightened without any real intellectual development. And so let's include about the illustration on page four to start this. The white wo woman looming large with a six pointed star by her right shoulder before a three story house and three black people and a set of scales seems to be one that can fall under the Ekengard doctrine of karma. Such is the scale representing justice, a reminder of their message that we all get exactly what we deserve. Al Quran Surah 89, 15 through 16 refutes the ideas that the upside of life is merely God's approval or reward, while the downside is proof of disapproval and a punishment from our Lord. The six-pointed star gives off 19 rays. This is the number value of achad or ahad. Words of singularity in Aramea, Aramaic, Biblical Hebrew, and Arabic. It seems to represent spiritual thoughts in the drawing. Five dots lead up and right towards the happy woman, and three go down towards the disappointed black man who stands before a window wearing a suit and tie. The white woman must be pleased at her privilege. The black man is sad about his loss of opportunity. Down to the right is a black woman on the telephone. Will the discourse say why she looks afraid? Is she phoning the police? A hill in the background leads upwards across the bottom of the illustration. The black woman at the bottom center of the drawing 
has her back turned on the scales of her left side? Was her hardship paying off a debt she owed? Or does she commit evil without regard to the equivalent consequences? Above the scales is a black man looking all colonial or militant. It is hot in that uniform, and he has it unbuttoned. Was he a slave or a soldier? The smirk on the woman's face that seems shadowed, weird, might imply she had an affair with that black man who rested on one of the pillars of a grand building. Hmm.